I've said it before and I will continue to say it. I believe that we are in a golden age of comics. And I say that for several different reasons. On one hand, we have some fantastic content that is being released by publishers large and small. We have all types of movies and TV shows and streaming services that are being announced sometimes on like a weekly basis. And on the other side, we have the values of our collectibles going up. But with every good, there is a little bit of bad as well. And in some respects, we are experiencing a double-edged sword effect. And what I mean by that is, yes, if we as investors and collectors and speculators have books in our possession, we are celebrating when those prices are going up. But on the other side, there's books that we don't own, that we hope to own, that are also going up in value. And so that is a little bit of the double-edged sword that we are all experiencing in many respects right now. And so I definitely understand the frustration that some people can have when there's books that they want to get, but those books are getting out of reach. I understand how frustrating that can be. But I wanted to record this video to, to basically say that you should not fret because there are still ways that you can be involved in comics even if some of the books that you are striving to get are out of your reach. And so in this video, what I want to do is to offer up five practical tips to keep comic books fun and more importantly, to keep you involved in the hobby of comics. I hope you enjoy this video. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. As you heard in that brief intro, we are going to spend some time in this recording talking about some practical ways that you can still be involved in the hobby of comic book collecting. You can still have some fun even if some of the books that you really want are out of your reach. And so my goal is to provide you with some practical tips that may actually help. But what I'll also tell you is that this is not going to be an exhaustive list. There's probably going to be some additional recommendations that people can make down in the comment section. So I definitely want to encourage you to leave those comments behind if you have them. And if you're looking for some additional ideas, I want to encourage you to take the time to read the comments because I think that there may be some great nuggets that are going to be left behind. With that said, let's get to the first tip. One of the first tips that I want to offer is to take the time to do some research and to find your favorite creator's first published work. And I suggest that you do this because the work oftentimes that your favorite creator is most known for is oftentimes the most expensive piece of work, whereas their first piece of published work tends to be less expensive and potentially undervalued by taking the time to research what this is and then go on the hunt for it, it is actually a great way to have a little bit of fun when it comes to comic book collecting. And you'll probably find that your favorite creator worked on a pretty obscure title, which is part of the reason why their first work is so inexpensive, but this is a great project to work on. This is something that I personally have done and it makes things fun. So do the research, find their first published work. So the second tip that I want to offer is to give yourself little projects. And there are ways that you can actually give yourself projects that will allow you to not even spend any money, but to spend some time with your collection and to appreciate what it is that you already have. I recently did this and I did it by hunting for homage covers within my collection. I identified some of the books that are uh, oftentimes redone as homages. And I went hunting for those books in my collection. And what was really cool is I realized that in some cases I had a lot of these homage covers and in some cases I had literally none, but it was a fun way to be able to just enjoy my collection and to go on the hunt, but to do it right here in this room. 
One of the other things you could do is if you love red covers or yellow covers or, or uh, green covers, why not hunt for those covers in your collection? If you have a favorite artist, go hunting in your own collection for some of their you know, work that you really enjoy. And it's just a great way, again, of making use of what you already have versus focusing on what you don't have. So as a comic book collector, one of my big things is organizing. I love sorting, organizing, rebagging, and boarding my collection because in many ways, I view myself as a caretaker on this collection. And so as part of that, you have to maintain it and you maintain it by replacing the bags and boards when they start to break down, by rebagging and boarding them, maybe in Mylar or something like that if you wanna dress up certain books. And then of course, better organizing your collection. And this is just one way again to my earlier point that you can have fun with what you already have versus going out and buying more or focusing again on the things that you don't have in your collection. And I'll tell you right off the top that there is no wrong way to organize your, your collection. I know a lot of people do it alphabetically. Some do it by topic. Some do it Marvel versus DC. There is no wrong way to do it. And that again is part of the fun. The question that you have to ask yourself is what makes the most sense for you? And once you land on that, just do that thing because it will work. On the channel, we have spent a lot of time talking about how comics are an alternative form of investment. And I know that a lot of people don't necessarily like that, but it is true. Comics are an alternative form of investment and there's really nothing wrong with that. But to the point of this overall video, the books that we sometimes want in our collection are outside of our reach. And so for that reason, I wanted to introduce you to an app that I recently became aware of called Otis. And this is essentially a platform through which you can own shares of other types of alternative forms of investment. And this includes uh, gym shoes, graded games, basketball cards, baseball cards, and of course, graded comic books as well. And I was on the platform earlier today and I saw a ton of really amazing books, including Hulk 181, the first full appearance of Wolverine, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and also the legendary Avengers issue number one, all really cool books. And the great thing again is that you can own shares of these comics and collectibles because you might not be able to own the full thing. So if you are interested in checking out Otis, there is a link in the description of this video. I encourage you to check it out. And when you actually fund your account after you set it up, your first share is on Otis. One of the last tips that I wanna offer is to take the time to read your comics. And it doesn't matter whether you are a collector, an investor, or a speculator. Remember that comics are a fantastic form of entertainment. There's things that actually happen that are magical between the pages of the comic. Take the time to read it. And it doesn't matter whether you read a hard copy or a digital copy, but you should enjoy the art, enjoy the story, enjoy the dialogue. And certainly if you're looking for some recommendations on what you should read, don't hesitate to reach out to me in the comment section or to reach out to me on Instagram because I can make recommendations, but you can also ask the other viewers that are gonna be watching and commenting on this video what you should read. As always, I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I certainly want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button and to leave a comment behind. I look forward to reading your comments. Take care.